Sunday in June, but we are today honoring our veterans. Now, you fellas notice this active duty swabby that we've got with us today. Uh, we appreciate uh, the sailor that's here. Yeah. Amen. God bless you, sir. And all of the rest of you that, that are here, and we here on the table in the front is uh, uh, some of the awards that have been given the folks of, of Esther Baptist Church. And, and I said this morning, I'll say again tonight, thank you. Thank you for giving part of your life uh, so that we could be free. Amen. That was the purpose. Amen. So that our nation could be free. Yeah. I want to preach today on a subject I've never preached on. And I want, to, I want to be as kind as I possibly can, but it may be disturbing to some of you. But if we can, if we can understand that God is uh, overall, Amen. there's nothing that God doesn't control right. or that God doesn't allow. It would be foolish of me to say that God wills everything that goes on in this world. Because in the first place, God is not willing that any should perish and that all kind of folks perish. But the overall thing is that God is God. And it can't go on unless God allows it. And if He allows it, He's got a purpose in it. All of us are contingent beings. That is, we are, there was a time when we were not here. And there will be a time when we're not here again. And this world's not dependent on whether we live or not. Amen. Amen. So that's what we call a, a second, second purpose, second mover. But a second mover demands a first mover. If we're dependent on something, then there must be somewhere something that's not dependent on nothing. Or else we would just go back through eternity being dependent on whatever came before us. There has to be a starting point. And that starting point is God. And He's not dependent on anything. He's eternal. And He's got an eternal plan and an eternal purpose that He wants to work out here in the world. And He will work out that plan and that purpose. Now... Uh, our subject today is super soldier, super soldier. I'm not, I have never, ever saw an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Never have. But I've had enough reports on them. And you probably, there's folks here that probably know what I'm talking about, about super soldier. Well, did you know the Bible, the Bible tells us about him? who he will be, that he's able to do extraordinary things to the point that nobody could defeat him. Amen? Well, let's look at this fella. Turn with us to Revelation chapter 13. And let's start reading at verse number one. And we'll talk today about the super soul. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like, a, like unto a leopard. His feet were as the feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed. Would that be a super soldier? <coughs> All the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? And who is able to make war with him? 
So far the greatest soldier that we've ever produced. There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. He opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. Uh Uh-oh. He made a mistake there. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. I'm going to stop there. I've, I've read enough. There's more that I'll probably talk about in that chapter. But a super soldier, if you'll notice that verse, verse number four, who is able to make war? No man could make war against Mr. Super Soldier. Our Heavenly Father, (coughs) thank you today for the privilege to pray. Thank you for your love and grace and mercy. And dear God, I pray that you would help us this day as we go to preach your word. I pray, Father, that we'd harm no one, but Lord, that we would, you would use us to open men's eyes and turn them from fables to the gospel of Christ. Turn them from the fables of this old world to the reality that God is running things and that we are not. Help us in Jesus' name, amen. Now this beast, this soldier, he's uh, not only described in Revelation, but Daniel the prophet had something to say about him. The apostle Paul talked of him in 2 Thessalonians. Isaiah gave a description of him and they're all culminating not only in a kingdom that he will set up, but in a specific man that is indwelt by the devil. That's where he gets his power. Satan's desire has always been to be like God. If God had a son then Satan has a desire to have a son. And if God's son would demonstrate the power of God, then Satan is determined that this man that he's going to have is going to demonstrate the power of the devil. As Jesus was God incarnate, so this super soldier will go, going to be the devil incarnate. He will have the working of Satan with all power and lying wonders and signs. <laughs> Every bit of the wisdom and talent that Lucifer has will be installed in this particular soldier. This man will be the very best, if you will use that term, that Satan can produce. The very best, and you know what a soldier is? A soldier is a killing machine. Amen. That's his purpose. Right. I, don't, I don't even know how to quote Rush Limbaugh, but aren't you supposed, soldiers supposed to kill people and tear up stuff? That's something like that. In verse, uh, or, or in chapter 12 and verse number 17, we find out that this fellow's purpose is just like the devil's purpose all the time. It is to make war. That's what he's here for, to make war and war with the remnant of the seed of the woman. (coughs) Whether that seed would be uh, uh, Israel, they'll have part in it. But if you'll remember, when I see that seed, that takes me back to the origin of this war. Way back in the book of Genesis, in the third chapter, and the 15th verse, God said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and they will fight. Is that right? They, they, and one day, he, one day you will bruise his heel but the day is coming when he'll bruise your head. Now, American scientists today are working on a super soldier. 
They are experimenting on how to make such a being. And here is the problem with people. I may not have this correct, but I think they call it PTSS, post-traumatic stress syndrome. And what that is, whenever you put somebody under such a strain, as being a POW in Korea or as being a gunner on a helicopter in Vietnam, as being put to such a stress, man can't handle that. And years later, it will still bear on their mind. I think I know folks who are still in Vietnam after 40 years, 50 years, they've not, over, am I telling it right? They've not overcome the stress that was placed on them there. Some of them from Korea have never forgotten what stress they were under. Amen. The devil's number one requirement to have a super soldier is to have somebody that doesn't have a conscience. Yeah, a psychopath, if you will. Yeah. A person that cannot feel remorse. Yeah. A person that has a cold heart, yeah. like a lawyer. Amen. 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 A, a, a person that could, could kill you, lie to you, do anything to you, and never even phase him. Right. Right. That would make a super soldier. Am I telling it right? Amen. Believe it or not, folks don't know this, but tests are given to determine whether you've got the abilities, the qualifications to do certain things. And I read this recently, that the international bankers, they want as a person to be their CEO who does not have a conscience. I read where the folks on Wall Street that handle the stock market, the big boss of the stock market must not have a conscience if he sees what he's done to the people below him. If he sees how his actions have destroyed lives, caused people to jump out windows, uh, cause people to commit suicide, but doesn't bother him because the number two thing, he must be self-centered. And I'm talking about a super soldier. He must be self-centered to the point that he, him and his life is the only thing that matters. You say, well, I don't think they would put such a person in power. Did you ever hear of Bernie Madoff? 60 billion dollars. Paid his money, paid his debts with money he didn't have. Wrote faulty checks, promised people he'd pay them, knowing that their lives depend, but he didn't care about their lives. All he cared about was himself. I'm saying if we want super soldier, that's what we'll get. By the way, this soldier we're studying is pretty good at accounting himself. Look at verse number 17. No man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Yeah, he's pretty good in the stock market. The super soldier has to have a grandiose sense of his self. We would call him egotistical. I am the most important person in the world. Like Donald Trump. Hey preacher, you, ought to, well, you always say uh, uh, you ought to name him, but when I name him, you look at me like you're crazy. 
He can lie like Pinocchio. Doesn't bother him at all. His nose don't grow. Manipulates people. Callous to the point that he just has no conscience. I know folks who would love to get their conscience clear of what's there. Amen. Thank God Jesus can do that. If you'll listen to me, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Now, as I look at this, and you just stay with me, wait till I get finished before you pass judgment. But you stay with me. He's made several attempts to come up with his super soldier. The one that I've read to you is his final attempt. But it's not his first attempt. Turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter number 6. Genesis chapter number 6. I think I'll just start reading there at at verse number one. That'd be a good place to start. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men, super soldiers, if you will. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. I think I'll stop before the fellow gets any grace. I want to give you this idea that the devil's first attempt at being a super soldier is right here. Now, I'm, I, it's, too, it, it's not involved in this sermon as to who the sons of God were. Some people teach that they were the children of Cain, or, yeah, of Cain that married the daughters of uh, Seth. Others people teach that the sons of God were angels that married human women. And other people teach that the fallen angels possessed actually human men and they married human women. But I want to get, I'll I'll say this. If they were the sons of God, they ought to be looking on the things of God and not on the daughters of men. That's far as we'll go with that. But I want you to notice this. Look at verse number two. It said that they chose them wives. They did not choose harlots. They weren't interested in choosing fallen women, they were interested in somebody that would make a wife that would produce a super soldier. Genetics. They were looking, the devil was looking to biologically combine such a set of genetics that he could produce mighty men. That he could produce what we call giants in the earth. Verse number four says they were the mighty men of old. And verse number five said every imagination of their heart was evil continually. Verse number 11 said violence filled the earth. They were warriors. Can you see that? They were, it was his intention to make warrior type people. And as he was going to do that, he would look at the daughters of men to try and see which one would make the best soldier by DNA. 
Jimmy the Greek uh, uh, said that and got fired. Wonder if I'll get fired. <laughs> that, that's somewhere else. But what, they, what I'm saying, this is spatial breeding. The devil is wanting to spatially breed somebody to make them a super soldier, if you will. Wives were intentional. Look where you are. You're in the book of Genesis where you've got all of the DNA of all the world stacked into just a very few people. I believe that when Noah went on the ark, I don't think he took a, a German shepherd and a chihuahua. I think he took two dogs, two canines, if you will. When he went on the ark, I, I believe he took two bovines. And in those two bovines was the genetic makeup to be able to produce a Brahma bull or a Holstein milk cow. You see what I'm saying? As they are looking at these, as they are looking at these daughters of men, they are doing this same genetic manipulation. They're wanting to produce somebody that will be a super mighty man. That's what that book teaches. Two felines. But those felines had the qualities of becoming a house cat or becoming a mountain lion. Now once we've got up here 2,000, 4,000 years later on, you can't breed backward. You can only breed with what you've got. I mean, if you've got two chihuahuas and you breed those two chihuahuas together, do not expect a great day. It's just not going to happen. That's what we call bloodline. Amen. You cannot breed backwards. You cannot go any, any higher than your original source. All you farmers know that mules are sterile. The reason they're sterile is because you're trying to cross breeds. And there's laws that are in fact there that you can't do that. But Satan is trying to breed where he can produce super soldiers. The thing about it is, if he's wanting to be God, he cannot breed what he does not have. He is not God. He will never be God. And regardless of every attempt that he makes, he will always be under God because God created him. But... The first attempt was drowned. The first attempt at producing this race of super soldiers was drowned in the flood. Every one of them there drowned. Second attempt, he wants to produce a warrior. Amen. He wants to produce a super soldier. Turn with me to Numbers chapter 13. The flood is way behind us now. And we're talking about when the children of Israel went into Canaan land. All of the giants of, of uh, Genesis 6, they all are drowned in the flood. But here is evidently another, didn't it say after that? In, in, in Deuteron or Numbers, I'm sorry, chapter 13, look at verse 32. This, this is the report that the evil uh, spies brought on the land. They brought up an evil report on the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land uh, uh, through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. The sons of Anak were such soldierly looking fellows that they would cause the, mo the uh, majority report to say there's no way we can whip these guys. If you will, they're super, super soldiers. Joshua, who defeated 
these very people in the land of Canaan, but he defeated them with the help of the captain of the Lord's host, Joshua chapter five, verse four. And he defeated them, beat them down to the point where they just was a remnant of them left. He didn't get them all. In fact, if you'll read Joshua 11, chapter 2, he left some of them in the town of Gath. Does that ring a bell? Do you remember whenever Saul and his army were camped out there and there was a super soldier from the land of the Philistines, from the town of Gath, his name was Goliath. And he came out there. He said something like, I challenge you. Forty days he walked up and down and said, send me somebody out here to fight. Uh, I am such a soldier that nobody can beat me. The staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. The tip of his spear weighed 18 pounds. How far could you throw an 18 pound spear? They said it was sharp and, and it glistened in the sun that it looked like it was on fire. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 33, he's called a man of war. He's called a super soldier, if you will. And he, he has been that way from his youth up. <laughs> Whenever David went out to face him, and I'm trying to hurry along, Whenever he went out to face him, he said, I said, send me a man. Well, you send this little guy out here. <laughs> Thank God. We do not have to be afraid of the giants. We do not have to be afraid of the super soldier. If Jesus goes with me, I can go anywhere. If he fights my battle, we've never produced, and the devil has never produced a soldier that's able to stand against my champion. All right, let's fast forward. I'm, I'm, I'll get out of his, those ten, attempts and you can read through the Bible. We'll find others. But let's go back to the man there in, well, I think it was the super soldier who said, I'll be back. Well, y'all weren't supposed to know that. Six million dollar man. Do y'all remember that? Uh, an actor by the name of Lee Majors and he, he was, a, uh, they took and repaired him with, with bionic parts. You say, well, that, that's crazy. The bionic woman, you know, I don't know whether you know this or not, but they are working right now to make that a reality. My, my daddy said whenever he was a little boy, said they had uh, walkie-talkies that you could walk around uh, wear them on your wrist and talk to people. He said, we said that never happened. They had little tracking devices. And they said they could track you wherever you went. And he said, there's no way that could happen. They was in the funny papers then. We're looking on the TV now. But I'm telling you that the devil's got a whole lot of wisdom. And he's intending, he couldn't do it biologically. So he's in, intending to do it with cyber nets, if you will. And manipulating the molecules and manipulating the genes and splicing, engineering DNA. The, their goal is to fix a man that God can't kill. Yeah, that's, right. that's always been the devil's right. desire, to replace God. And they gain ever more, gaining uh, knowledge over the uh, atomic structure. They're computerizing software to do things that's just unbelievable. Amen. And, and, it, and, it, and honest, uh, some of those things are very, very good. If they can get something, if they can computerize something to make a paralyzed person get up out of that wheelchair and walk, well, that, you would have to say that would be good, wouldn't you? Oh, you say they'll never be able to give life. You better go back and read Revelation 13 again. 
Look here at verse number 15. I think it's where I want to go. Back in Revelation 13. Look at verse number 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, would, would you go along with me? I've got a nurse sitting there in the back. Would you go along with me that the medical profession has already got the God conscious in their idea? They think that God's all right and prayer's all right, but if you really want help, come to me. Am I telling that right? They'll say, well, you know, uh, uh, we can fix you. Don't, don't trust God until it gets down to the deathbed. And when we can't do nothing else, we'll call a preacher. That's man's attitude. And their computers and their computerizing and their bionics is going to go together to produce this super soldier. Cyborgs. Part human, part computer. Science fiction. How many of you know they're working on giving sight to the blind? How many of you know that they're working on giving hearing to deaf people with bionics? Raising the lame. <laughs> I know a man that didn't have to work on it. I know a man that said, Lazarus, come forth! And he come out of the grave. I know one that was able to heal the lame and uh, give sight to the blind. But you see, uh, uh, Micah is not willing to wait on him. We're wanting to produce it on our own. Whenever he failed with his selective breeding program, whenever he failed with the idea of bi biologically engineering a super soldier, and incidentally, they need to turn loose the records on those mounds down there at South Charleston as to who was really buried there. He couldn't do it with genetics, and so he's going to appear to do it. He's going to appear to succeed with cybernetics and implants. Super soldier. Outrun a racehorse. Shoot him, and his deadly wound will heal itself. Strong enough to lift a car. DARPA, D-A-R-P-A, -A, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. Whenever this fella is, is introduced, he's got powers that would make people say, who can, who can fight against this guy? He makes war with the saints. Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 says he wears them out. But one den denotation of this fella is he is a blasphemer. And not only does he blaspheme God, but he compels other people to blaspheme God. Revelation chapter 13 verse 5, he's braggadocious. That is, he brags about what he's done, how much he's accomplished. This fella would tear your arm off and eat it and then brag about it to anybody else that wanted to fight. He has a PR man that goes around trying to uh, make public relations to, hey, for you sign seekers, he's able to call fire down out of heaven. Yeah. You really want to go that way? Look at verse 13. Doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth and the sight. Hey, that would blow out every, every charismatic church in Charleston. I mean, you walk in and be able to call fire right through the ceiling, man, they're going to fall at your feet. Yeah, right. It doesn't bother him to lie. Look at verse 14. Doesn't bother him at all to deceive you. You want a tattoo? He'll give you one. Look at verse 16. This big tattoo rage that's going on, he's going to make sure that your body's marked. He's going to give you one. When I think about it, and I'm not trying to de detract from the military personnel that we have, and, and I love them, I do. I was in the Army myself. I know all about being away from home and desiring to go home, and, and you got so much time you got to spend there. But they have special groups, don't they? Don't the Navy, Navy have like SEAL teams? 
SEAL Team 6 or the Army, they used to have the, I guess they still got the Green Berets and the, the Rangers, Special Forces. Air Force has got their commandos and the Marine Corps has got their uh, Special Operations Group. Hey, there's going to be a frogman come along. Revelation chapter 16, verse 13. Revelation chapter 16, verse 13. I'm talking about a frog man. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. But you see, his entire goal can funnel right back into Genesis chapter 3. That there is a warfare going on between her seed and his seed. And just about the time that everybody in the world has agreed that this fellow cannot be defeated. About the time that everybody would think he's the greatest that ever was or ever will be. In fact, he will sit down on the temple altar and claim himself to be God. And about the time that he's got the whole world under his control, I want to show you the real super soldier. Look in Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19 verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. The armies which were in heaven... (laughs) That's me and you, Christian friend. Followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen and white and clean. Out of his mouth, not not an unclean spirit like a frog, but out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. I like the way the King James boys did this. King of kings, Lord of lords. I believe we could say soldier of soldiers right there. Amen. Yeah, yeah, he's coming. I believe he's coming. I don't know how close we are. I'm not in on it, but but I, I believe they're working on it. I believe they'll be able to fix it to where we've got this half man, half computer fella that nobody can beat. But just about the time he thinks he's got the whole world in his grip, heaven will split. And here will come the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm glad I'm on the winning side. I may look like I'm on the losing side. Church may be half empty. People may not want to hear. But thank God I'm on the winning team. And one of these days, by the grace of God, I expect to see him when he comes in all his glory. Would you bow for prayer?